Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalat, Wassalam, Ala Rasulillah. We'll start the class, inshallah. Uh, we are today, Zadul Mustaqna' in the chapter Babu Zakat al Fitr, the chapter pertaining, pertaining to Zakat of Fitr. Al Fitr is from Master Min Qawlika after a Sa'im Iftaran. That's the Arabic terminology pertaining to what Fitr is. وَيُرَادْ بِهَا أَصَدَقَ عَنِ الْبَدْنِ بَعْدَ صَوْمِ رَمَضَانِ What's intended by Zakat al-Fitr is the Zakat pertaining to the body. It's not related to wealth. It's related to the body after the fasting of Ramadan. It's given as a purification and as a shukr for the month of Ramadan and for having the ability to have fasted and done all the other acts of worship. So it's a purification and it's a shukr. The author, he says, Tajibu ala kulli Muslim. It's obligatory upon every Muslim. In Bukhari and Muslim, from the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam zakat al-fitr, sa'an min tamar, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it an obligation to give zakat al-fitr, a sa' a measurement, which is a sa' of tamar, or sa'an min sha'ir, or a sa' of wheat. Upon the slave and upon the free man, upon the male, upon the female, and upon the small and upon the uh, not small, upon the one who is uh, above the age of puberty, from the Muslims. And the Prophet commanded that it be given before the people go out to Salat al Eid on the day of Eid. So it's an obligation upon the Muslims. And there's a question here I want to ask if anybody's with us. The question is, uh, we said that Zakat al-Fitr is related to the month of Ramadan. Okay, the person fasted the month of Ramadan and he gives the Zakat al-Fitr as a purification for his fasting, for any mistakes that he made, and as a shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then does this mean that the one who didn't fast the month of Ramadan doesn't have to give zakat al-fitr question to yourselves or do they still have to give zakat al-fitr even if they didn't fast the month of ramadan yes barakallah fiqh they have to do ulama said they still have to give it and there's a proof from the hadith which we just took of ibn umar because in the hadith the prophet sallallahu said was saghir wal kabir that zakat al-fitr is an obligation upon the young child and we know that the young child in most instances doesn't fast but even then, the parent of that young child has to give zakat al-fitr for that young child. So this is a clear proof that even the one who doesn't fast the month of Ramadan, it's obligatory upon them to give the zakat al-fitr. Jazakallah wa khairan. The Prophet, the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, فَضْلَ لَهُ يَوْمِ الْعِيدِ وَلَيْلَتَهُ صَعْنٌ مِنْ قُوتِهِ That the apart from being a Muslim condition of giving zakat al-fitr is that you have to be a Muslim the second condition is that you have to have above your needs in terms of food and other things which we're going to mention on the night of Eid okay and the day of Eid so if you have above your basic needs for the night of Eid and the day of Eid then you would give a sa uh, of provision okay to the poor so the author he said, فَضَّلَ لَهُ الْيَوْمِ الْعِيدِ وَلَيْلَةُهُ صَعْءٌ مِنْ قُوتِهِ وَقُوتَ عِيَالِهِ وَحْوَائِجِهِ الْأَصْلِيَّةِ So if the person has above, uh, above the amount of his basic needs in terms of food and for his, the food and nourishment of his family and in terms of the needs for his well-being of himself and his family. Okay, so what is, required, what is meant here in terms of the well-being uh, of himself and his family is the basic needs that he's required to live like the basic things that are required in the house from the fridge uh, from the ability to pay for the electricity for that day uh, to pay for the rent for that day so if a person has beyond that in terms of wealth for that particular day for the night of Eid and the day of Eid then they have to pay a saw of zakat al-fitr okay if they don't have that much wealth to cover their basic needs as described in the sense that he doesn't have food for himself or his family nor is he able to pay the basic needs like the rent of the house or the electric bills and the basic nourishment required for that day and any other essential items like a fridge that is required in the house or air conditioning maybe even if it's essential if they live in a hot country then if he doesn't have the wealth 
to have these things or to purchase these things in the time frame of the night of Eid and the day of Eid, then he doesn't have to give zak zakat al-fitr. But if he does have the wealth for those basic needs, the nourishment and the other needs, then he has to give zakat al-fitr. And Shaykh Sami ibn Abdurrahman, he mentioned an important point, which is that al-maqsood bil qut fi kalam al-mu'allif ma yaqumu bihi badr al-insan min ta'am. That the qut mentioned in the phrase of the author, this word qut, I saw it mistranslated in some of the books which translate, maybe even the notes that you have, is translated as food which is stored. It rather means the food which is the, the people are nourished upon, the food which is eaten. Okay, This is what it means, the word qut as a side point. Uh, so we mentioned that uh, the person should have nourishment and basic necessities for the day of, for the night of Eid and the day of Eid. And if they do have that, uh, then they have to go and purchase a sa of food. Now, if the person doesn't have the ability to purchase a whole sa, but he can purchase half a sa, half of this measurement, then even that is obligatory upon them. Why? Because the Prophet وسلم, said in the famous hadith, فَإِذَا أَمَلْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ If I order you to do something, then do of it to the best of your ability. Do of it that which you can. So based upon this hadith, then the ulama, they say that the person, if he can only give half of the sa'a, half, half of the measurement of zakat al-fitr, then he should go ahead and give half of that measurement. And also because it's tuhratun, it's tuhra, it's purification for the body. So likewise, when you're doing uh, purification in terms of getting ready for the prayer, and you only have half of the amount of water, you still have to use that half of the amount of water. They said likewise here, you have to give the half. Um, and a point mentioned by Sheikh Hamad al Hamad in his explanation of this text that So Sheikh Hamad he says an important point when we were discussing that in order to give zakat al fitr it's obligatory of the person who has um, wealth above and beyond his needs for the night of Eid and the day of Eid in terms of nourishment and the essential items required for living in the house uh, like the rent and the ability to pay the electricity, the ability to have a fridge etc. We mention all these needs, right? Uh, if a person has above and beyond that but he doesn't have liquid cash, so a person has for example um, a, a nice TV and a TV is not an essential item, right? We could say then the person has to sell that TV and gets a lesser value TV and use the cash that he gets from that to purchase the sa'a. So Sheikh uh, Hamad al Hamad is saying that that which is above your needs for the night of Eid and the day of Eid and you have it in your house, you should sell that if you don't have liquid cash in order to be able to purchase uh, the sa'a to give as zakat al fitr. The author he said, وَلَا يَمْنَعُهَا الدَّيْنِ إِلَّا بِطَلَبِهِ that <coughs> Zakat al-fitr, unlike zakat al-mal, is not uh, is still given even if the person is in debt. Okay, it's still given even if the person is in debt, unless the debt is being sought from him at the time of when it's obligatory to pay zakat al-fitr. Okay, so if it's obligatory, if the if the person is paying the zakat al-fitr and at the same time, which is the night of Eid, then and the morning of Eid, before the Salat al-Eid, a person comes to him and says, you owe me such and such money. And the person doesn't have enough wealth to pay the debt as well as buy Asa. Then what he does, he puts forward paying the debt and he leaves off buying the Asa for Zakat al-Fitr. So in normal circumstances, the debt a person has doesn't prevent him from paying the Zakat al-Fitr. However, if a person comes to him and asks for the repayment of the debt, then in that situation, the repayment of the debt is given precedence to the paying of zakat al-fitr. The author he says, فَيُخْرِجُوا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَعَنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَمُونُهُ <clears throat> So the author he says that the person, he pays the zakat al-fitr for himself and also he pays for any Muslim that he is responsible for feeding, like his young children, like his wife, etc. So in Al-Bayhaqi, in Al-Kubra, Imam Al-Bayhaqi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in Al-Kubra, he narrates the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Addu sadaqat al-fitr amman tamunun. Pay the sadaqat al-fitr 
for everyone who is under your uh, control of spending, for everyone that it's obligatory upon you to spend on them. Okay? And the author, he says, وَلَوْ شَهْرُ Ramadan." even if it be that you spent on them in the month of Ramadan. So what he means here is, for example, that um, if you spent upon somebody in the month of Ramadan, just for the period of the month of Ramadan, okay, somebody, you, you had a relative that came and stayed with you, and you paid for the person's food and basic necessities for that month, then it becomes obligatory upon you to pay zakat al-fitr for that person also, okay? فَمَثَلًا رَجُلٌ كَانَ يَمُونُ شَخْصًا فِي رَمَضَانٍ فَيَجِبُ أَنْ يُؤَدِّي فِطْرَتُهُ As I said, so if you spend upon a person just for the month of Ramadan, that period of time, then even in this situation, it's upon you to pay zakat al-fitr for that person. Shaykh Amr Bahjat, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, he said, one may find it strange that how is it that me, I'm doing a voluntary deed, which is I'm taking care of this person who's with me, I'm paying for his basic necessities, and through me having done that voluntary deed, now I'm having to do an obligation which is pay zakat al-fitr. So there are other similar situations, as the Shaykh mentioned, uh, in the Sharia, which we can relate to. For example, he says, uh, Shaykh Amir Bahjat, he said, for example, if you are praying a nafil, the nafil is not an obligation. But however, when you embark upon praying the nafil, the surat al-fatiha becomes upon you an obligation. And for you to leave it, you would be sinful. Likewise, he gives the example also in the terms of giving the udhiyya. The Udhiyya in the Madhab of the Hanbalis is not an obligation. However, once you embark upon the intention of giving the Udhiyya, then it's obligatory upon you to leave off uh, cutting the hair, etc. So again, the author is saying that if you spend upon somebody in the month of Ramadan, then that person also, it becomes obligatory upon you to pay for the Zakat al-Fitr as well as other people in your family like your wife and your children. The author, he said, فَإِنْ عَجَزَ عَنِ الْبَعْضِ If you are unable to pay for all of the people who are under your care in terms of spending upon them, بَدَأْ بِنَفْسِهِ Then the person, then you should give the zakat al-fitr for yourself first and foremost. Then, if you still have money, فَإِمْرَأَتُهِ فَإِمْرَأَتُهُ Then, بَدَأْ بِنَفْسِهِ فَإِمْرَأَتِهِ Sorry, grammatically incorrect. Then he... He would, if he didn't have enough money, he starts with himself. And he st if he still has money, then he would pay for his uh, wife also. فَرَقِيقِهِ And then he would pay for his slave if he still has money. فَأُمِّهِ And then he would pay for his mother. فَأَبِيهِ And then he would pay for his father. فَوَلَدِهِ And then he would pay for his child. So the ulama, they say, نَفْسُهُ لِأَنْهُ مُطَالِبِهَا أَوَّلًا He starts with himself because he is the one who first and foremost, it's obligatory to pay zakat al-fitr upon. ثُمَّ إِمْرَأَتُهُ لِوَجُوبِ نَفَقَتِهَا عَلَيْهِ مُطْلَقًا And then he has to pay for his wife because all of the wife's uh, needs and spendings are upon uh, the husband, in essence. ثُمَّ رَقِيقِهِ And then he has to pay upon his slave because as it's known that the, uh, the slave doesn't have any wealth, uh, the wealth belongs to the master. ثُمَّ أُمِّهِ لِتَقْدِيمَ شَارِعْ لَهَا فِي الْبِرْ عَلَى الْوَلَدِ and then he would pay for his mother because the Sharia, of course, has made it obligatory for the son to take care of the mother. And then his father, because it's obligatory upon the son to also be good to the father. And then his child or his children, because in general, of course, it's upon him to spend upon them. So again, if in a situation where you don't have enough money or money is constrained, difficult for you to pay zakat al-fitr, then you start with yourself. And if you still have money, then you go through what we described in terms of who would be next. And if money is still left, فَأَقْرَبَ فِي mirath, And then you would spend, you would pay the zakat al-fitr for those who are closest to you in terms of the inheritance. So any relative that comes in the inheritance, those who are closest in line of the inheritance, then they are the ones that Zakat al-Fitr will be paid for from your pocket if you are spending on them in your general life. A qawl thani, another opinion held by Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala is that an al-Fitr tajib ala kulli insan bin nafsihi that the Zakat al-Fitr, each person who is able to pay should pay it by themselves. So of course the young children, they're unable to pay according to the second opinion. But for example, 
the, a son who is able who has some money enough to pay zakat al-fitr he would pay for himself likewise the wife would pay for herself etc etc according to another opinion in the madhab held by Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala the author he says well abdu bayna shuraka alayhim sa a slave that is owned between a few people they have to pay a sa for him but they divide it according to their share of that person so if there's three people that own a slave then each one of them would pay a third of the sa a third of the sa uh, for zakat al-fitr uh, which is due upon that slave due for that slave Dorothy says well, يُسْتَحَبُّ عَنِ الْجَنِينَ and it's recommended it's mustahab to pay for the fetus which is in the stomach so Abd al-Razzaq in his musannaf and Ibn Abi Shayba rahimahumullah ta'ala in his musannaf also he narrated from Abi Qulaba who said كَانُوا النَّاسُ يُعْتُونَ صَدَقَةَ الْفِطْرِ حَتَّى يُعْتُونَ عَنِ الْحَبْلِ that the salaf the sahaba and those after them they would pay صدقة uh, الفطر they would pay Sadaq al fitr even to the extent that they would pay it for the, the fetus in the womb they would even pay it for the fetus in the womb so as the author said it's the madhab's opinion that it's uh, highly recommended that one pay Sadaq al fitr for a child which is being born in the womb uh, Sheikh Sami al suqair in his explanation of Raud al murbi' he mentions a mas'ala he said if there's more than one child in the belly then what is upon you to pay you don't have to pay for more than one child if you have twins coming or you have more than twins then you only have to pay for one child because one child is which that which is mutayaqan one child is that which is generally known for sure and adatan and customarily uh, a mother only gives birth to one child so he said in the situation that there's more than one child in the belly you it's only recommended or you only have to give for one of the children the author he says لا تجب للناشز ولا تجب للناشز ناشز it's not obligatory upon the ناشز meaning that you don't have to pay for the ناشز you don't have to pay صدقة الفطر for the ناشز the ناشز is the wife who has come out of the realm of obedience of her husband she is being disobedient to the husband she's not giving the husband his basic rights and she's being disobedient in a variety of ways so in this situation the husband is not obligatory upon him to pay zakat al-fitr uh, uh, for his wife but inshallah this is something which is very rare we hope in muslim households because the muslim man and the muslim wife they try their utmost to have the best of relationships and to please each other for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the author he says وَمَنْ لَزِمَتْ غَيْرَهُ فِطْرَتُهُ فَأَخْرَجَ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِهِ أَجْزَأَتْ the author is saying here in this statement that those who are under the responsibility of him to take care of financially okay like the wife and the children and others like the parents that may be living with him or not living with him so he pays for them and he takes care of them financially and due to that he has to pay he has to pay the cattle fitter for them now if one of these people pays the cattle fitter for themselves without the permission of the husband or the man or whoever is responsible for spending on them then their zakat al-fitr will be acceptable so the wife for example she pays zakat al-fitr uh, for herself without asking the husband's permission then her zakat al-fitr is still going to be valid and as an extension point here that if there is someone who you are not obligate, obligated to pay zakat al-fitr upon like for example you have a brother uh, he's wealthy he has his own income but for whatever reason you want to pay zakat al-fitr for him um, then in this situation it's not allowed for you it's not valid for you to pay zakat al-fitr for him except and unless he gives you permission to do so as mentioned by Sheikh Hamad al-Hamad and others from amongst the ulama the author he says shams al-fitr. when does it become obligatory to pay zakat al-fitr it becomes obligatory uh, from the night from the ghurub shams from the sunset of on the on the uh, night of Eid so as soon as the sun has set on the night of Eid that's when it becomes obligatory upon you to pay zakat al-fitr al-illa what is the illa what is the reason الفطر, because it's connected to the fitr to the ending of Ramadan الفطر, and of course the fitr in Ramadan uh, is comes about from the sunset of the night of Eid 
ولأن زكاة الفطر شرعت طهرة لصائم مما لحق صومه من لغو ورفث ونحوه وهذا يكون عند تمام الصوم and also the ulama they say that because the fitr as we mentioned before it's been legislated for purification uh, for the one who was fasting and the end of the fasting only comes about uh, from ghurub al-shams from maghrib on the last night uh, on the last day of uh, ramadan the author may Allah have mercy upon him he says فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ بَعْدَهُ so therefore based upon this principle that he's just mentioned that Yani, uh, zakat al-fitr becomes obligatory upon the Maghrib in the last day of Ramadan فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ بَعْدَهُ Therefore, whoever becomes a Muslim after that point, after the uh, Maghrib on the last day of Ramadan أو ملك عبد أو after that point, after Maghrib he uh, becomes an owner of a slave أو تزوج or he becomes somebody who gets married أو ولد له or he has a child لم تلزمه فطرته then these situations, he doesn't have to give zakat al-fitr in these situations. Because the illa, the reasoning is at the time of the wujub, which is the ghiyab shams which is the maghrib on the uh, last day of Ramadan, that he wasn't a person who it was obligatory upon to give zakat al-fitr. Rather, it became obligatory upon him after the time of maghrib on the day on the, on the last day of Ramadan. So in the situation is mentioned that if he became an owner of a slave, etc., or he got married after the uh, last Maghrib of Ramadan, then he doesn't have to give zakat al-fitr in these situations. A question posed by Sheikh Sami ibn Abdurrahman or a mas'ala, if a child's head, a mother is giving birth moments before Maghrib on the last day of Ramadan, so the child is being born, the head pops out, walillah alhamd. However, the rest of the body, it takes a few hours and only comes out after Aisha on that night. Then what is the ruling here? Does the person pay zakat al-fitr for this child whose head popped out at the time of Maghrib, but the whole birth, the actual birth took place way after Salat al-Isha? So what is the ruling here? Would zakat al-fitr be given? So the ulama they say yes, zakat al-fitr will still be given لأن البعض يكون له حكم الكل Zakat al-fitr will still be given because a part in a situation like this is given the ruling of the whole So even though the head, it was only the head that came out okay, then it's given the ruling of the whole body because due to this qaida, due to this principle which I just mentioned البعض يكون له حكم الكل that a part in a situation like this is given the ruling of the whole the author he says, well, It's permissible for you to give your zakat al-fitr two days prior to Eid only, not beyond two days. So you, can, you cannot give three days before Eid. You can give two days before Eid or one day before Eid. And the evidence is the hadith in Bukhari of Ibn Umar, And they used to give the fitr before one day, or two days. So Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu talking about the Sahaba saying that they used to give at times zakat al-fitr a day before Eid or two days before Eid. Question, what is the wisdom of not giving zakat al-fitr more than two days in advance? Barakallahu feek ahsan may Allah open up good for you. Exactly. So this is the point that uh, as the brother mentioned that we're supposed to give them zakat al-fitr so that they can be enriched for that day and join us in the festivities of Eid and not have to go around the town and the city and beg. So if you give more before two days before Eid, then the ulama are saying that probably these people, they will spend that material or they would consume that food or go and sell it and get the money and do something else with the money. And then they will be in a situation which defeats the objective of Zakat al-Fitr, which is, as we mentioned, to enrich them so that they can share with us in the festivities of Yawm al-Eid. The author, he says, وَيَوْمَ الْعِيدِ قَبْلَ صَلَاةِ أَفْضَلُ And to give Zakat al-Fitr on the day of Eid before the Salah, yani, uh, uh, some time before the Salah on the day of Eid is the best, is the best time. وَقْتُ الْأَفْضَلِيَةُ أَوْسْتِحْبَابُ The وَقْتُ الْأَفْضَلِيَةُ أَوْسْتِحْبَابُ As we just mentioned is for sab- في صبيحة الْعِيد قَبْلَ الصَلَاة is before uh, Salat al-Eid on the day of Eid and this is agreed upon by the majority of scholars 
بإتفاق الأئمة is agreed upon by the uh, all of the ulama all of the former dahib uh, Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu as in the hadith that we mentioned before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amara bi zakat al-fitr an tu'adda qabla khuruj al-nas ila salat that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that the zakat al-fitr be given before the people go out to pray the uh, Eid al-fitr salah so that's the evidence for this point the author he says wa tukrahu fi baqihi and it's disliked to give after Salat al-Aid on the day of Eid. It's disliked, it's makru. However, it's wajib, still wajib upon the person to do so. So if a person delays giving the zakat al-fitr until the Salah is finished, then it's become makru for him. He's in a situation of kiraha. However, it's still an obligation upon him to give the zakat al-fitr. And the illa is anna ikhrajuha ba'da salah yufawwitu ba'da al-maqsood minha min al-ighna al-fuqara fi had al-yawm. And the illa, the reasoning is that um, the objective, some of the objective is lost, which was to enrich the, um, the poor uh, before uh, Salat al-Eid on the day of Eid. A qawla thani, there is a second opinion in the madhab, which is as follows. Anahu yahrum, it's, it's, for, it's forbidden to delay the zakat al-fitr after Eid, Eid Salah. So the author is telling us that it's makru, okay? There is another opinion in the madhab held by Shaykh Islam in Taymi and others that in fact it's, it's haram to delay after uh, Salat al-Eid. This is tahrim and the person is sinful for delaying it to that point. The author he says, وَيَقْضِيهَا بَعْدَ يَوْمِهِ آثِمًا The person, if he delays uh, after the day of Eid, then according to the author, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he says that the person, he has to still pay the zakat al-fitr. He has to make qada of this, of the zakat al-fitr. However, he is sinful for having delayed it. And a second opinion in the madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah and others is that at this point, if you've delayed it after Yawm al-Eid, the zakat al-fitr, then it's not going to be accepted as zakat al-fitr anymore. It's just going to be a sadaqah, it's going to be a charity from amongst the other charities. It won't be accepted from you as zakat al-fitr. However, as we mentioned, the author is saying that if it's delayed after the day of Eid, then the person still pays it as qada. However, he's going to be sinful. Fasl. The author says, section. Yajibu sa'un wa yajibu sa'un. The author, he says, it's obligatory to give the measurement of a sa'a. Uh, the hadith which indicates this is in Bukhari Muslim, the hadith for Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, where he says, Kunna nukhriju zakat al-fitr sa'an min al-ta'am. That we used to give zakat al-fitr a sa'a of ta'am. And ta'am here means hanta, yani al-qamh, flour of wheat, wheat flour. Aw sa'an min sha'ir. Or we used to give a sa'a of sha'ir, a sa'a of wheat. Aw sa'an min tamr. Or we used to give sa'an min tamr, a sa'a of dates or we used to give a saw of aqit aqit is dried yogurt dried yogurt of some sort or we used to give a saw of zabib of raisins and the measurement and the volume of saw is amdad is four amdad and what that equates to in terms of grams, it equates to 2,225 grams, right? Uh, two kilos and a quarter. So it, it equates to uh, two and a quarter kilos worth of bur al jayid, of um, good wheat. That's what it equates to. And of course, many uh, Islamic centers and um, masajid, they will tell you what the monetary value of that is also, okay? The author he says, Min burrin aw sha'irin. So you have to give a sa. The author says you have to give a sa of either burr, which is uh, barley, or sha'ir, which is wheat, or daqiqihima, uh, or the flower of these two barley, uh, the flower of barley, or the flower of wheat, or sawiqihima, or the mixed paste of the two of them, barley and wheat, or tamarin, or of dates, but not the type of dates which are rutub. Not the dates which are rutub and that which is kept in the fridge. Because this would be something which wouldn't benefit the poor for a long period of time. Okay, they would go off very quickly because most of the poor, they don't have access to fridge, etc. So the tamar is not the type which is rutub, which is kept in the fridge. Or zabib, or the person can give raisins, 
أو أقط and as we said أقط is dried لبن dried لبن قوله the author he says فإن عدم الخمسة أجزأ كل حب وثمن يقتات if the person is unable to get to these uh, food stuffs that we just mentioned, these five stu- food stuffs that we mentioned, then he can give any type of grain or uh, any type of fruit which is stored, okay, and which is consumed, which is storable and consumed like rice and lentils. And the ulama they say, al adam lil khams, the qualifying rule for what. Um, for what explains your inability to get the five foodstuffs which I mentioned by the author is البلد, is that these foodstuffs are not available in the country and, not, and also uh, not available in the land customarily uh, not available in a land which is close to your land customarily in norm and it's difficult for him to go that far and to get those five food items which were mentioned. So the author is saying that if you can't get those five food items, then you can go ahead and give from any grain or any uh, fruit which is consumed. And I gave the example of rice and lentils. And the dabit, the qualifying rule of what uh, indicates or what entails that you cannot get hold of those five is as I mentioned that those five are not available in your land nor are they available in a land which is close to you customarily customarily in terms of close in distance a riwayat thani an imam ahmed another riwayat from imam ahmed is that it's permissible to give any type of qut any type of food stuff which is consumed by the people of that land so it doesn't have to be from the five items which were mentioned rather it can be any type of food stuff which was uh, which is consumed by the people of the land even if the five items that the author mentioned are available in the land so even if they are available you don't have to give those you can give any type of food stuff and this is another opinion held by Ibn Taymiyyah Ibn Qayyim Imam Sa'di and others from amongst the Hanabila scholars Sheikh Abdul Salam al-Shawayr Hafizahullah Ta'ala in his explanation he said that the food stuffs can be mixed it doesn't have to be that you give a complete saw of barley. You can give a saw, okay, of um, barley. Then you can give a saw of dates, for example. You can mix the foodstuffs if you wish to do so. The author he says la ma'ib, la ma'ib, meaning that the foodstuff that you are giving shouldn't be of poor quality. For example, rotten dates that have worms in them, or dates that are, um, yani, over moist. For example, this kind of stuff shouldn't be given. So anything which is of poor quality shouldn't be given. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَا تَيَمُّمُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ And do not give in your sadaqah that which is khabith, that which is rotten and that which is of poor quality. And of course the person knows that when he gives his sadaqah and he pays his zakat al-fitr and zakat al-mal, then it lands in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it lands in the hands of those who are in need of it. So the person is always happy to give the best quality if he's able to do so. The author he says, وَلَا خُبْزٌ And also you shouldn't give khubz. And khubz because it's not something which is uh, muddakhar. It's not something which is generally stored for a long period of time. So the, the amount of benefit that the fuqara take from it is for a very short period of time. So the intifa, the benefit is very little uh, as opposed to weeds and rice and other things. And it's permissible in terms of giving the zakat al-fitr that a person, if he has a sa'a, instead of giving it to one person, the sa'a, he can give it to a group of people. So instead of giving one sa'a of, zik- of his zakat al-fitr to one person, okay, he can give that one sa'a and divide it by three poor people, for example. And likewise, the opposite can be done. A group of people, instead of each one of them giving their zakat al-fitr individually to different people, they can gather their zakat al-fitr and they can give it to one person. However, as Sheikh Amal Bahjat mentioned, in this situation, in this scenario where a group of people give to one person, once that person that they've given the zakat al-fitr to has enough wealth from that zakat al-fitr to sustain him for a year, then nobody else should give zakat al-fitr to him because now he becomes from those who are rich. Right? And uh, zakat al-fitr is only for the poor. 
some masail to mention before we finish. Uh, the first of them, if a person gives another person zakat al-fitr to hold on behalf of the one that it was intended for. So the poor person who zakat al-fitr was intended for is not at home. So when you go to distribute your zakat al-fitr, you knock on the neighbor's door and you give it to the neighbor. Now this is not valid for you to do so unless the poor person who the zakat al-fitr is intended for gives permission for the neighbor to be the wakil gives permission for the neighbor to be the one who has the right to hold that zakat al-fitr for him. So not permissible for you to give zakat al-fitr to anybody else other than the one who is going to receive it unless that poor person gives you permission. Gives permission. Uh, another mas'ala mentioned by the ulama is that if an organization collects zakat al-fitr can they dis dis uh, delay the distribution of the zakat al-fitr till after Eid? So we said delaying it till after Eid is something which is not permissible. However, if this organization is connected to the government in the sense that it's an official body, which the government, the state, the Wali al-Amr, the uh, Amir has appointed for the collection of the zakat and the distribution of the zakat. So in this situation, it's permissible for the delay of zakat al-fitr. The reason they say this, they say because um, it is it is the Wali al-Amr who is responsible for the affairs of the poor and the people in general. So once the Zakat al-Fitr has landed in the hands of this body, which is appointed by the state, then it's as though it's in the hands of the Wali al-Amr who is responsible for the distribution of the Zakat al-Fitr. However, if the body is not an official body, if the organization is not an official government organization, then it's not permissible for them to delay the distribution of the zakat al-fitr. Um, another point which I, another mas'ala, which I just mentioned in passing, and further mention it now, is that the madhab holds that the distribution of the zakat al-fitr is valid for all eight categories of financial zakat. So we know that in Surah Tawbah, the eight categories of financial zakat are mentioned, other than just the poor and the miskin, it's mentioned also the wayfarer, it's mentioned also those who collect the zakah. For example, it's mentioned also the mujahideen, it's mentioned for the one who is uh, in debt. So these type of situations, okay, mu'allafat al the ones whose hearts are being united. It's mentioned that zakat al-mal, zakat of wealth, can be given to these uh, categories, eight categories. So the madhab holds that even zakat al-fitr can be given to these eight categories. Tayyib. However, another opinion in the madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah and other is that zakat al-fitr is only for the fuqara and the masakin, only for the poor and those who are in need. Okay, only for the poor and those who are in need. Why? Because the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ said, "Tu'matan lil masakin," where the Prophet ﷺ said, "It's uh, it's nourishment and it's food for the ones who are needy," as mentioned by Sheikh Hamad al hamad So, based upon this. Uh, opinion then zakat al-fitr is only for the poor and the needy and not for the eight categories mentioned in surah al-tawbah as held by the madhab i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make whatever was explained clear in our minds and beneficial for us to act upon and i ask allah Jal to forgive me for my mistakes and shortcomings uh, if anything was beneficial it was from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for your study of this text, I mean, what is Akamullah Khair? If you have any questions pertaining to what was said, then please feel free to ask.